Hello. Congrats on the show. Thank it's you. doing so well. It's, I love that you guys combine both of your knowledge of, with the, the crime and the, the drama. Like it's just you guys are able to build the show. Mm -hmm. What what brought what brought on this idea to collaborate on this kind of show? Take it. Um, it was absolutely conversations that were going on in our household um, with the the relationship between law enforcement and community and how it's completely broken down and it was something that we were looking to do and then Fox happened to reach out and say they wanted to do a TV show in that space so the fact that we were looking to do something and we suddenly had this opportunity to speak on this issue in such a big platform as network television was just an opportunity we really couldn't pass up. Yeah, I mean, we were, we were very affected, of course, by the Trayvon Martin case, and it was a real big conversation in our household. And um, uh, when Zimmerman was found not guilty, you know, our, our oldest boy, who was 12 at the time, was, was completely rocked. And so it just sparked a lot of conversation in our house, but it also sparked this desire to not just only deal with it as parents, but to deal with it as artists as well. Well, the series kind of reflects also on um, Sandra Bland with the with last episode, and um, throughout the series, it's just it's, so much has happened. What can you tell me? How does that affect your writing? Like when you add it on, or when you want to talk about it? Well, you know, we have like a really intense research process. We met with law enforcement. We met with people from the Department of Justice. Um, and we also met with, you know, specifically Wanda Johnson, mother of Oscar Grant, who, who came in and, and met, with, met with us. And um, uh, Oscar Grant is a young man who was killed in Northern California, and they made the film Fruitvale Station about him. But when you just meet with real-life people and, and when you meet with somebody like Wanda, it just makes all of this, all, the, all these things that you see on TV and read about, it's just real and tangible, and it breaks your heart as well. And so it really just anchored us in really, you know, obviously we're doing an entertaining show, but it also anchored us in, you know, really knowing that we needed to just challenge perspectives and, and, and tell, tell a story that hadn't been told before. What's the major, there's so many messages that you guys are delivering on this, uh, on the series. What major message do you want people, the audience, and also maybe politicians or police to know about this? I mean, there's, there's many. I mean, one of the big ones is for people when these incidents happen, for, for people to start seeing uh, the humanity of, of people involved. That's something that's absolutely been missing and why these incidents keep happening. Um, and also to stop being desensitized to these incidents, that it's going to take all of us, community, law enforcement, um, government, uh, activists, everyone coming together to fix this because right now everyone's they're talking at each other, not to each other, and it's it's too big a problem um, to not be talking to each other. Every, everybody standing in their own corners and 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 looking to cast blame at everybody else, but yeah, it, it is all hands on deck. I think the other thing too, which is you know, hour eight airs tonight, and there's a there's a there's a speech in hour eight that talks about being a 24-hour person. You know, a 24-hour person is somebody that's reliable, that's consistent, 24 hours a day. And, um, you know, for everybody that sees this particular hour, they'll, they'll get it. And it would just be really great if, if all of our elected officials were 24-hour people. Well, the series kind of twists and turns. There's so many twists and turns with this, with Janae being arrested and um, Cox was out of town, but he was identified by Corey. What, how do you guys map out everything to really like make it flow and is, is to make an end as well? Well, we had a, we had a really interesting process in our writer's room. We did a process where we figured out all of the, the character beats the, uh, the character arcs and where they're going to go. And we also just figured out the mystery beats. And so we just spent a lot of time really just creating just a very intense mystery that would hopefully keep people guessing and keep people engaged. You know, our creators is to get the audience at the edge of their seat and while they're leaning forward, hit them with the truth. And, and that's, that's, that was our goal. I hate the um, cliffhangers. Uh, every after every episode, I'm like, oh, I, I think I know. No. <laughs> so, what impact do you hope that the series will bring out for for? Um, I mean, 
from writing this whole process, what do you feel like you learned from this whole process as well? Like, since you really researched it as well, from before to now? I mean, the, the, the research process, which we called Shots Fired University, it really brought so many different voices into this discussion, some that we agreed with, some that we didn't, but we forced ourselves to stay open to hear everyone. And honestly, that's what we really hope for the show, that it does open people up to hear everyone on this side. So, um, I just, it was, it was an incredible process and, uh, I mean, I feel like I've learned empathy. Right, and just also the other side of it, just to get people to listen, you know, I mean, we listen so much in our process. We also just find that most people, they jump to conclusions and, and have opinions without even really listening to what's really going on. Last question. So who killed Campbell? <laughs> oh, well, you gotta wait, gotta, gotta, wait, gotta, gotta wait and watch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.